Hello everyone, I don't know if you can see or hear. Uh, let me just open this up. Okay, I'm gonna close my stream down because uh, it's running a bit slowly. Uh, okay, um, hello everyone, welcome to episode 11 of CVCRM TV. Uh, we are in still in the state of lockdown in the UK. We've had some snow this week and uh, which has been interesting, but uh, we are, um, well, the government says they're on track for, for uh, vaccinations, which is good. So uh, that's our update from sunny England. Uh, I'm just messaging some of the team to make sure it's streaming. Um, okay, so today the idea is that we are going to um, show or well, talk a bit about um, emailing from CVCRM. So not necessarily the functionality and how emails work and how things, what the different uh, bulk emailing tools you've got and all that stuff. Not not that really. What I'm trying to do is just demystify, explain like I'm five, um, the whole process of setting up emails. Um, so CVCRM obviously is um, an open source product and often with open source products, uh, there's a very strong technical community behind the product, but uh, not necessarily uh, one that can translate uh, into simple terms what needs to happen and, and how systems should work. So obviously with, with open source and self-hosted, you're, it's up to you to, to set up and configure everything. Um, and some of the technical guides can be quite confusing or you don't really understand what you've got to do, especially when there's 20 or 30 different things that you have to do. Uh, it becomes difficult to know what's important and what isn't. So what I'm gonna do today, it's not gonna be a long session and we'll try and keep them short and to the point because we don't wanna just confuse everyone even more. Uh, so what I'm gonna do today is talk about why do I need to set something up for CVCRM to email? Um, uh, someone from our team is saying my lip sync is out. Well, that's life. Um, I'll be gone from the screen soon. So. Um, yeah, what, what I'm going to talk about is why do we need to set CVCRM up with the email? Because if you're using a software as a solution uh, product, you might not need to do this. Or if you're you know, using Microsoft Dynamics, for instance, you might not need to do that because you're already in the Microsoft suite of products. Um, so why do we have to do this in CVCRM? And what are my options? And then how can I test as well? So there was a thing on ideas.cvcrm.tv from someone asking how to set up CVCRM with Mailtrap. So we'll, we'll look at a few of the things. Um, so that's enough babbling, let's get on with uh, okie doke. So I'm in my Drupal 7 environment. Uh, it's the same as when I last used it. I'm using Drupal for this one, uh, just to keep it mixed up. Um, but it's exactly the same process for setting up emails in uh, WordPress. Um, because we're doing it from the CV side, we're not doing it from the uh, from the CMS side. Although, uh, having said that, you should make sure your CMS is also configured to use uh, your SMTP gateway uh, that you're using and has, and has had all the verification on it. Often what happens is the CMS is left to use whatever emailing the hosting providers provided. Um, and you end up with situations where passwords aren't being sent or email or you know password resets aren't being sent or uh donation summaries through online forms aren't being received etc etc so uh it's important you make that change as well that you um you make sure that all of your online utilities products services are using the same trusted solution that you're putting in place and the, there are some caveats and, and i'll talk about them as we go through this. So uh, so let's talk a bit about terminology. So you'll often hear SMTP banded about. Um, that's just, if you just wanna break it down, that's just a way for a system to communicate with another system in order to send emails, right? So there's lots of different ways it can be done. 
SMTP is, is probably the easiest way uh, and the most utilized way. So, um, uh, and it's simple mail transport protocol, I think it stands for. I'm gonna get some of these acronyms wrong, but you know, let's just, well, I'll give it my best shot. Um, so again, terminology is a little bit confusing. So SMTP, let's just take that as a given. Um, whatever products I'm gonna use, it's an SMTP gateway that I'm using and we'll talk to that product. So in CVCRM, um, how do we set up emails? Oh, what's going on? I'm getting dinged and pinged. Um, oh, it's Danielle confirming she can see the screen. Well done, congrats. Uh, my spot is online today, so that's good. Um, so what was I saying? Yeah, so in CVCRM, we've got uh, the different settings around emailing uh, and like usual things move around. So where are we? Uh, da -da -da -da. So outbound email then SMTP. So if you don't install any ex extensions, you don't do anything, uh, this is what you're gonna see, right? So um, uh, you might have it defaulted to mail. Uh, if you have it defaulted to mail, which if you just installed a CVCRM and just ran it, then you probably are gonna have that setting, I think. Yeah, you will, because it doesn't have an SMTP. So what that's gonna do is use the hosting service to send out emails. now. Of all the recommendations today, the one that I'm going to make is if you're going to do that, then my advice probably would be to not do that. You should be using a service that you've set up and configured and and um, can monitor. Uh, if your hosting provider can do all that, then great. Um, but normally they don't really um, they don't really do anything about uh, guaranteeing mail delivery, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's why you normally would use a third party service like Spark Post, like Mail, uh, Mailgun or uh, Mandrill from MailChimp or pff, simple email service from Amazon. Like this, there's, there's millions of them out there. Um, you would normally use one of those services because you're gonna get some reports on deliverability. You can cross check what Civi's uh, telling you uh, and compare that to what your SMTP gateway is telling you, your, your email providers telling you. You kind of get a bit more of a, uh, a handle on what exactly is going on so you know the first thing you want to do is probably make that smtp uh you could if you're debugging you could just redirect to the database if you can't be bothered to check or i say can't be bothered if you don't have the time let's put it that way um to check and to do to set up a mail trap service or another service which captures outbound email you could just redirect to database you could disable outbound altogether so if you're doing a test environment uh, a qa environment and you're cloning from production like a pre-prod you could just turn it all off, so you're not gonna you're not you're not gonna accidentally send anything out uh, at all. Um, and uh, then you've got send mail, which it, again, like it's a bit like a proxy service. But so this is all where Civi uh, is very very strong. But at the same time, um, the technical barrier for you guys to set stuff up is is quite high. So my simple uh, recommendation would be if you're gonna if you're testing, you can use Mailtrap. So Mailtrap is a service that will act like an inbox for any outbound email. So whatever email Civi sends will go to one email, but one email box in this service called Mailtrap, and you can see what the recipient would have got had they got it in their email box. So you get a much more real, uh, reproducible kind of um, testing environment. The redirect database, you're still not sure how that's going to really look. So um, we always use uh, dummy SMTP services. We've used others in the past. Mailtrap is the easiest one if you're, you know, you, you don't have an, a service set up on your, on your own. There's a lot. There's a lot about that um, you can set up using Docker and things like that to to set your own up. But Mailtrap's good enough for what we're doing. Again, if we've got data protection issues or we've got things like that, then we've got our own services that we use for that as well. Uh, so in when you're in Mailtrap, uh, let me just see if I've got access to Mailtrap here. Yeah. So here, here, for instance, I'm I'm in Mailtrap. I've signed up. Uh, you get a fr there's a free account where you can send 500 emails. Um, you get one mailbox, one project. Um, so if you just tr want to try it out and see how it works, then you can try that out. Uh, in the settings, uh, not in the settings. Where is it? Inboxes. Uh, so your inbox is. Let's say you've got five or six different installs of Civi. You could set up a, a different inbox for each install. So I might have a pre-prod, a QA, a test, and a training, maybe. You know, 
uh, and then I know which box I'm expecting emails into and not just into one box with lots of things different going on going on and it's all a bit confusing what am I looking at so um, with the free account you can you only get one uh, you get one maybe you get two let's try one yeah so you, don't, you, you just get one so that's fine uh, I need one for what I'm doing uh, so um, when you go to the inbox it's empty and it's showing me the settings for it there and it's showing me SMTP pop free so I just want uh, it should show me show me the credentials yeah, that's what I want I don't want this I don't want the integrations because I'm not using its integrations I'm not trying to make it work the way it, the way that it wants to work I'm gonna tell Civi what to do so I've already got this Civi set up with uh, an SMTP mail trap so I'm gonna change it to this one um, so we've got SMTP mail trap 2525 so where am I getting those from so in here I've got SMTP mail trap as the host let's go let's move that window let's go back there so the smtp server doesn't say host anywhere and no, that doesn't say host so yes you know you have to know that that means the host so that's fine so i've got mine set correctly which ports i could use any of these ports i'm using 2525 just to avoid any kind of uh, conflict although in here it says the most common that doesn't mean i can't use 2525 um authentication you need to set to yes um, because uh, I've got a username and password here that I've got to supply in order to use this. So let's take that. Uh, and like I said, I don't mind you guys seeing this because this is a throwaway account, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and I'll put that in there. So I'm going to do save and test. Uh, okay, so it's saying email sent, everything looks all right. So let's have a look at my mail trap. Uh, and there you go. Right, so now I've got a, a mail in my inbox and it's just saying my SMTP settings are correct. Uh, it doesn't have any HTML, oh, fine. All right, let's just make sure that this is working how I expect. And so I'm just gonna pick any old contact. I don't even know who I've got in here. Okay, there's a few. So there's someone in there. So let's uh, send them an email. Um, Gonna pick anything, so there you go. Uh, let's pick one of those. I've seen form template responsive, yeah, great, thank you. And let's send them that, okay? So that's sent now. So going back here, there's my simple email, and that's what's come through, All right? So, um, like I said, with a handy thing with tools like MailTrap, is you can see what that email is going to look like on different devices. So, on on the, I did single column. If I'd have done two column, you'd have seen it respond uh, and be responsive to different formats and stuff. But it's still being responsive. I can see it's scaling up. It's not just staying one size. It's scaling up. It's keeping my border. Uh, and then you know on the desktop side, it's, it's showing how it should show. So that's it. That's as simple as it is to get a test mail trap uh, or well, a mail trap account set up so that you can start to test and see what your outbounds are looking like. It's really handy when you're doing things like rules and automation, like maybe you've got email reminders set up for membership statuses, event reminders, all this kind of stuff that you might want to test, see how it looks, make sure it's working, it's actually sending. So you want to turn all your jobs on, you want to turn everything and configure it as though it is production, uh, but you don't want emails to go out. So uh, turning the emails off means you, you, you don't see them. So it's really difficult to test an end-to-end -end process, a full workflow becomes quite difficult uh, and it's also difficult to test all, all kind of scenarios where doing it this way I can uh, you know pick 50 people and just send them the email and they're all going to come in here and I'll see for instance if I didn't have the first name what does it look like are my replacement tokens working all right is everything looking okay and it's much easier to spot the problems when you do it this way anyway so that's that's uh, why I would recommend if you're starting out you're trying to see what's what um, set it up with the Maltrap service. It, it makes it easy for you. It also makes it easy for your users because they can see how these emails are going to look without actually receiving it into their inbox. It's also going to protect your reputation because you're not ending up sending emails out and then users or, or gateways rejecting them because you haven't quite set everything up properly. So that's Maltrap. Like I said, there's loads of different services. I'm not going to really talk about them. If anybody's interested in more 
and how you could set up your own just pop something into ideas tv and we'll go through it um so the second part of this what i want to talk about is well all right i've i've done the testing i'm happy now i want to set something up for real so what do i do um and this is where it, you know you see a lot of uh, guides and things on on this topic uh, uh in in various forums so uh matt wire did uh well samuel did one matt wire did one as well uh which is here and he's put it in his blog post um so you'll see lots of these and uh they are great i mean matt's the great work um but they're quite you know there's quite still quite a lot to learn right so why do i need to know what dmark is and why do i need to know what spf is and dki and like there's a lot there to take in this is and this is where i feel like cvc crm tv dot tv can help you and and just demystify some of this stuff so should you worry about this yes you should does that mean you need to know how to do it and make it work no because the tools are out there these days to take that away to take that learning curve away from you you don't need to know how to do that uh, well you don't need to know the technicalities of it and the, the real intricacies of it um, because all of the smtv gateways these days will have tools to help you set that up and set it up correctly so let's assume um, out of the tools you know you've got amazon simple email you've got outlook if you're an outlook user you're a microsoft house uh and you've kind of gone online a lot of the charities work with have done that they've gone to 365 they've gone online because they're getting uh you know not-for-profit discounts on those platforms um or you're using other things then the first thing you need to look at is well can my can my platform can it take bulk emails now our experience again i'm not talking about whether this is possible or not our experience is the outlook uh, 365 tools utilities are not designed for mass emailing so if i've got 10,000 contacts in my database and i'm going to be doing a newsletter every month and i set up civi to talk to my outlook that is not going to work like that's not going to give you a, a solution that is reliable and that is that performs right so that the way outlook 365 works is uh the online services are going to are going to throttle your delivery they're going to um they're going to potentially stop delivery if, if it keeps happening uh the bouncing side is difficult to configure and to get right there's quite a lot of problems there so if you want to go down that route uh, and we have done in the past we've we've set it up to work with exchange when it was exchange before we've worked we have it working with various microsoft utilities and tools but um for the amount of time and effort it takes um i'm not sure it's it's cost effective and it makes sense right especially when there's so many alternatives out there so what you probably in a state is i need to pick something i need to pick a tool um uh I, I need to pick a service to use uh so the service that we used to go to by default was mandrill uh, because a lot of the users we used to talk to had mailchimp already and they were looking to start using civi um and if you have mailchimp already you used to get mandrill off the back of your mailchimp subscription so it was a real cheap easy way to get uh, civi mass mailing without having to invest in another tool especially if you're already a MailChimp user, your reputation, everything is already set. So it was real easy. Uh, then about two or three years ago, they changed their pricing model. So you didn't get Mandrill uh, free of charge anymore. Uh, any any plans that were there were getting migrated off to Spark Post, right? So they were the ones who really drove the move from Mandrill MailChimp to Spark Post. Um, since then, we've kind of stuck with Spark Post for a lot of our clients. Um, it's a it's a pretty good service um it's really easy to integrate and um you know obviously it's it's horses for courses not everybody's on spark post but there's a couple of plugins so today i'm just going to talk about i'm going to show, show on the spark post side but really focus on the tools and what you should the way you should approach these problems like i say you've got one option which is to learn everything there is to learn um and understand everything there's to understand uh and if you want to go down that route absolutely fine that's the route that i went down that's a lot of route that a lot of technical guys will end up going down guys and girls but uh, if you don't want to go down that route and you want to say well i just want a service and i just want it to work really that's really what i'm after um then pick a tool and use the tools um features and functions uh that that, that it provides to to do what you want to do right so 
in my examples, I'm just gonna use Spark Post because like I say, we use it a lot uh, and their tool sets a lot better. I'm also gonna talk about a couple of other bits like MX Toolbox and a few things that can help you check that what have you what you've done is right and that whatever service you're using and wherever it, your emails are going out from are um, guaranteed stroke you are expecting them to go out from there uh, I'll come on to that a bit later so let's start at the beginning so uh, see if you know what we've got in here da, 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 da. so these are the mail settings we can come back to this later there's nothing really in here that I need to worry too much about um, there's options for double opt-in and for groups so for instance if you've got groups exposed where people can sign up for a group um, online like a newsletter group or something it is good practice to to have a double opt-in so that you don't get lots of spam email subscriptions where uh, it's not necessarily the subscriber that has subscribed it's somebody else and uh, you want that you want that email to be verified before it hits your group so there's kind of options like that that you can do <clears throat> um, there's lots of CV mail. There's there's the ability to have multiple email addresses for the same contact. So settings like this can help. They can hinder. Um, I would leave them unchecked. There's also issues like um, there was a recent blog post about uh, or Stack Exchange uh, issue about if somebody is a duplicate and you do a merge, then potentially CV mail is going to pick up the wrong contact. Uh, and therefore not send the email because it thinks they're deleted um, and because they've got the same email address as somebody who is not deleted uh, neither contact gets the email so there's a few issues like that you need to be aware of but they're real edge cases you know the 98 percent of your email or 99 percent of your email is going to work absolutely fine um, you may not see those issues in other platforms that are email platforms because they normally say the email address has to be unique so you don't end up with that situation where the same email is against two people. Um, you can set Sibby up to do the same, but you know, in again, in our experience, most implementations end up with duplicate contacts on emails. Anyway, let's forget about this. So there's there's lots of options here. If anybody wants to know these in more detail, just throw a throw a suggestion on ideas.sibicrm.tv and uh, we'll talk about them. So Spark Post. Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, I'm trying not to let me just take this out here I'm just going to show it here because I want to see what I'm saying no all right so uh, yeah spark post what about it yeah my internet's a bit slow all right so uh, spark post is in effect an email delivery platform right so all it all we're trusting it to do when we're using it with civi is to to uh handle deliver uh and track emails right so the reason i say track is because uh sometimes i want to run uh spark post this stats and compare to them can compare them to what civi does uh, and what civi is reporting uh, for various reasons but um, sometimes you want to do that so so uh, that's what spark post role is in my in my world in the civi world right it's purely a delivery mechanism so civi is going to produce the email it's going to put all the content together but it won't deliver it because it doesn't know how to do that so what it's going to do is hand that email off to spark post and in its spark post responsibility to deliver it now if you send an email with that's um in in Civi, if you send it uh, a mass email to fifty thousand people, uh, that happens fifty thousand times, right? So each email is uh, produced, is is kind of munched together, uh, and then handed off to Spark Post or to whichever mailing uh, provider you pick to deliver to its recipient, right? So that's that's why these tools need to be um, robust, and it, it, you you need really need, need to trust them, otherwise. Uh, imagine 50,000 bounces, let's say, because you didn't pay for your uh, subscription. Uh, that's a lot of work to tidy up um, when you realize there's a problem. And that could be, you know, that could be a few days later that you realize actually it didn't go out. 
so it is really important uh, you want to be using a service that you trust you also want to be making sure that you're paying for it and keeping it up to date and that you're monitoring your uh, account delivery levels etc etc right? it's not it's not just kind of set and forget kind of thing you can set email reminders up so that these tools will tell you if you're reaching your limits or if your payments have bounced or whatever um, but in our experience where the reputation of uh, emailing from Civi falls over is when there's a change of staff or change of billing details and the uh, service silently fails because nobody knows that uh, you were paying for that service and then suddenly Civi stops sending emails. So obviously the problem is reported as a Civi issue. Um, so you might want to subscribe to the service via your provider rather than trying to do it independently because that way you're kind of, everything's together and you don't need to worry about it and you're kind of paying for it all in one chunk. Um, uh, you know, again, just my opinion. It's not how you necessarily need to do it. So once I've set up my SparkPost account, again with SparkPost, uh, there's a free account with a certain number of deliveries and a certain, um, a certain number of domains and things like that so um, you you set up your domains in spark post and I won't do that here I don't have a spark post account or a domain that I can do that with that I can go the entire process and verify it and all of that but it's really straightforward and because these tools have lots and lots of uh, customers there's lots of uh, help and the guides are really good in terms of how how that works so for instance, they've got their own guide on DKIM and they've got all this stuff. Uh, and if you want to learn more, um, uh, so the key thing here that you can literally go into and um, it will it will tell you whether your DKIM settings are correct or not. So you generate an email address, it's going to give you, uh, that's probably because I'm logged in and I'm already uh, I'm, I'm already kind of got my domain validated but you can generate an email address and you email that email address and then it will tell you if everything looks all right or not uh, the, that's not really that important that one uh, because we're going to use MX Toolbox to tell us that but uh, for your SPF builder it can tell you what your SPF and that's the sender policy framework I think um, uh, again an important part of this process uh, and it will tell you what that should look like now, imagine I didn't know what I was doing. I don't really know all this. Uh, when I add the domain in uh, SparkPost, um, let me just see if I can get to that screen. Right, let's see if I can get to, yeah. Okay, so yes. So when I add, so let me go to this screen. Uh, so when I add a domain, it's gonna ask me what it is. It's gonna say whether I want it in my main account or whether I'm sharing it with sub accounts, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but once I'm in it, it's gonna ask me to verify it and it's gonna tell me what I need to do to verify it. And then it's gonna tell me what to do about my my DKIM configuration. It's gonna really, you know, it's really straightforward. It really does, it makes life quite easy. Again, let me just see if I can get to a page where you can see all that. Okay, so here I've got my vader.cc one set up. Uh, it's telling me uh, what my my DKM setting should be and then I've got a verify button there and it will tell me if it's not verified if it's not verified it'll tell me what to set it to same with the bouncing domain I can check it it's telling me why I need to do it um, it's good I can verify it the tracking domain again the same thing if I wanted to set up a second tracking domain not the main one I could do that often you'll see you know um, you'll see like p dot or t dot or track dot or something else in in front of the domain for for those kind of things. It's all about reputation protection. Um, so what I what I'm really trying to say is using these tools means that I don't have to learn the intricacies of all the different settings. They will guide me through. They will make it easy. And then once I've set it up, I would literally go into um, I would go into my Civi <coughs> uh, if I'm using SparkPost and uh, go into extensions. Okay, I'm just gonna add a new one. Look for the Spark Post. So the Spark Post integration one, uh, I'll download it. I'm gonna try this, so let's hope this works. 
when I say I haven't tried it, I haven't tried this D7 demo for a while. Hopefully it's still okay. Okay, so less in, right? Uh, and, and it's enabled. So now if I go to mailings, uh, not mailings, sorry. If I go to administer, system settings. So now the outbound email says spark post in it. So if I go there uh, and ignore all the settings metadata issues I'm seeing there. Uh, I literally have one setting I need to give it, which is the API key. And it's telling me how to get it as well, all right? So again, I won't click on it because I've got multiple email accounts set up on my spark post. Um, these errors are notice errors. I'll report them back to the guys. Uh, but once you've set that, that's it. You're good to go. So if I've set my uh, domain up correctly, I've gone through its verification processes, uh, I can set my API key that it gives me. Uh, so once I'm in there, um, you can uh, you can edit you when you get you sorry when you create your API key, it gives you it. Uh, you can name it because I can have multiple things sending from my domain. So for Vader CC, I've got I've got an internal wiki that I'm using. I've got ideas.cvcrm.tv. I've got a few other things um, that are sending through that domain. So uh, I can set up an API key for each one. So if there's a problem with one of them, I know exactly where it came from, where that email originated from, and I can close down that one API without having to shut down the entire service. So uh, it, again, just adding more power, it just means I've got set it, set it up only once. I don't need to set up domain verification DKIM with 50 different tools. I'm doing it once and I'm having all of my applications use that one service. Uh, so, yeah, literally once I've set that, um, once I've set that API key, I'm good to go. Now, IP pools, we use uh, a kind of company Spark Post account for all of our clients where they don't want to, they can't afford the, uh, you know, they can't afford to pay like the $100 or $70 for an IP address account uh, with Spark Post. So we, we often share the IP, across, uh, you know, against three or four of them. And that way they're all paying a fraction of what they would if they went independently. Uh, so you can specify here which IP pool to use. So if we've got 20 or 30 um, people using the same Spark Post account, we can we can split them up into different pools. So if there was a, ever a problem around reputation, i.e. I, I spammed you know, 10,000 people by mistake and a few of them hit this is spam email, then it's only going to affect that IP pool. It's not going to affect everybody. Um, and I can always switch that IP pool out to a different IP and get rid of that, get rid of it altogether. So, uh, you know, again, you, this is getting more advanced, and if you're getting to that state, then then you can. These are the features you kind of get get uh, available. The custom callback is only if you're using proxy or something else. Um, if you've got a lot of rewrites going on, you're kind of hiding the series default routes. Then I will need to tell it how to tell me uh, what's happened. So, for instance, when an email is delivered. Uh, Spark Post wants to tell Civi this email was delivered. I, I think I've delivered it successfully to this person's mailbox. Uh, it needs to tell Civi that that action happened. So this is how, how it's going to tell Civi. Uh, and normally, 99% of the time, you're just going to leave all this blank. You're only going to put in the API key. Uh, and that's it. Literally, that is it. You press save and send, and it will send the email, and you'll see it's all working fine. Now, that's my Civi set up, and it's all configured. Great. I'm happy it's all working. Uh, the thing that I would recommend you do is that you do get onto uh, MX Toolbox and set yourself up an account. You can do a free one. I think um, we've got, again, we've got a company-wide one, so I've got lots of domains and we've got a paid account. But, um, you know, you can do a free one and set up some email alerts in it to tell you if your reputation is affected, if things are going wrong. Uh, and what these are telling, what they're trying to do is, I just want to, yeah, it's all for one domain, so that's fine. Uh, what they're doing is they, uh, they're they keeping an eye on the domain, right? So what they're saying is, um, is the email being delivered f from that domain, is it okay or not, right? So uh, here we can say, we can see that I, potentially my Vader Consulting uh, domain is in a blacklist in the last seven, domain, uh, seven days. Now it's IP listed, so I need to see which IP it is and why it's listed in there. Now I know what this is about because I, I, uh, I, 
I saw this uh, a few days ago and realized what it was about, so I'm not worried about it. But, uh, you know, if there was, um, if there was uh, something active, then I can see that here. And MX Toolbox will tell me that, look, you're, you're on a blacklist here, or this isn't quite right, your DMARC's not right set up correctly, or your SPF alignment here, for instance, is not quite, uh, it's not quite right. It's fallen to 94.2 94 and it should be above 95. So these these are options for me to to have a look at and see what see what's going on, but it will tell me as well about D mark, okay. So is my D mark stuff set up? My DCAM is it set up correctly? So my two gateways, Spark Post and G Suite, are fine, right? So I've got some unknown ones, and I could oh, I didn't mean to click that. I've got some unknown ones, and I could have a look to see uh, what IPs are sending and what are they, and how many are going out, uh, how many emails are actually going out that way. So that I can start to look at them and see, well, do they need doing? What are they? They might be tiny services that are about internal emails that I don't really care about. Uh, but uh, majority of them I probably do care about. Uh, like I say, this is for us, it's internal, so it doesn't really matter too much. But if I had, you know, a thousand, two thousand going out every month, then I would pay attention to that. So that shouldn't be mine categorized, it should be verified. All the domains, everything that I'm sending out they should be verified services, right? Um, uh, protection, inbox data, blah, blah, blah. So I've got other options here as well. There's a lot I can do from this tool. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the simple steps are set up MailTrap or an equivalent service. Make sure you're happy with delivery. What does it look like? What do my emails look like? Have I dedicated for all the data anomalies that I've got in my CRM? Uh, I'm happy, let me set up a, a real service. Uh, how you know whatever that is like i've shown with spark post but it could equally be amazon ses it could be uh it could be uh, mandrill still we have quite a lot of clients on mandrill uh, it could be anything you know any of the big um mainly delivery gateways um set it up on there start sending then the final stage is the monitoring right so uh making sure that my reputation is high so that's where mx toolbox comes in so with those those kind of three sets of tools you're done and this keep the implementation simple uh, my advice again would be to use the tools that whatever whatever um, service you've picked use their tools don't try and set decam and try and do it outside of that you try and do it independently of the tool you're using it just makes it hard it makes it you you're, you're almost doubling up the work because like i say these guys have got these guys have got all this and when you add the domain through their through their tools this is just a way to check it or build one but if when i'm actually doing the domain addition through spark post or through mandrill or through whoever they literally walk me through step by step what i need to do i don't need to learn the terminology i don't need to learn what it's about i just need to do what they're telling me to do so um so i think that's it really i don't think i wanted to show any more than that uh what i uh, just to reiterate what i'm trying to do in these sessions is um reduce the technical barrier into CV. I think there's a lot of, um, it's, it's a common trait on all open source products uh, platforms is that um, the driver and, and the, the larger community is often quite a technical one. Um, so it can feel like it's a technical product. I'm not, you know, how do I learn this? I need to know all this different technical terms and I can't do it. I'm not an engineer, so all that kind of stuff. But it's, you know, it really isn't like that. There's a lot you can, ignore or let other tools take care for you you don't need to necessarily learn it all um, and i'm going to just present the the 101s of that stuff in here and what i would do now i know there'll be people in the community saying that's not the way you should do it you didn't talk about x y and z i know it didn't i'm trying to get people to um i'm trying to get potential people to use CVCRM and to understand its power and then there's always tweaking and as we know as consultants there's always things uh there's you know, to get to 100% costs a lot more than to get to 98%, right? Uh, that last 2% is is where the money, uh, where the money goes and the time and the energy. Uh, but if I can get you guys to at least use 95% of what's out there, 98% of what's out there, fantastic. You'll see how strong and powerful Civi can be and then you can decide how far you want to take it. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. That's my sermon over. Get off my surf, soap box. Um, stay safe and we will see you next time uh, as mentioned if you can if you are interested and want to see different things we still don't have anyone in chat I might drop the chat off now uh, we don't seem to 
have people joining live. Um, but if you are interested and want to see things, then please do go to ideas.cbcm.tv and post your things there. Hope that was useful and see you guys 